Hey captains, happy Monday. Continuing our talk this week on what your role as a leader in the church looks like and what are some of the practical steps of that leadership. And so this week, as I said last week, I'm going to begin uh, in Acts 2 and really break down what I see as the seven pillars of a thriving Christian community. And you could even say that they're the seven foundations to a thriving Christian community. And so in Acts 2, verses 42 through 47, it says, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So that's a lot, but um, each week we're going to break down part of this, uh, what is that, five verses, um, and really just dive deep into what I see are seven pillars of a thriving Christian community. And this week we're going to start with the gathering of the saints. And so uh, really that's in verses 44 and 46. It says, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They worshiped together at the temple each day. And so I know last week or a couple weeks ago, we uh, talked about virtual ministry, right? That's a reality we're in right now. Uh, I even touched on that Jesus even uh, had ministry for people who weren't near him, that, that they were away from him, they were apart from him. He wasn't in the same room as them, but he still ministered to them. Yes, virtual ministry, distant ministry is a thing. It's thriving right now, and that's amazing. But the Bible emphasizes so often the gathering of the saints and the laying on of hands. Uh, the Hebrews 10.25 says, Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Matthew 18.20 says, For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. And 1 Timothy 4.13-14 says, Focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you've received through the prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. So how does all this apply to your position as a GXP captain, as a leader in the guest experience ministry at Gateway? Well, as leaders of GXP teams, we've given you the authority of what I like to call graceful accountability. And so growing up when I was uh, trying out all these different sports and activities after school, uh, there were some that I loved and that I was committed to that I went to all the time. And then there were some that I wasn't great at. One of those was basketball. I loved the idea of basketball, but to this day, I still am terrible at basketball and cannot make a free throw for the life of me. But uh, when I was in the middle of that growing up, I, I made a commitment to a team. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join basketball. I'm going to give it a shot. It's going to be great. And I was horrible. And in the middle of the season, I really burnt out. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is humiliating. Uh, I, I couldn't even make it as a bench warmer. I was that bad. And I wanted to quit. But my dad had the authority of spiritual, um, graceful accountability over me. And he said, you made a commitment to this team. You're going to stay until the end of the season because you have to be good to your word. You have to stick to that commitment. And then you can leave. And you can leave gracefully. You can leave um, with with full uh, authority and grace to leave and, and be okay. But when you make a commitment, you keep that commitment out. And so uh, how this applies to guest experiences is, is when someone signs up to serve, yes, it is a volunteer position. Absolutely. It is a volunteer position. They're not paid, right? But it is someone that we are counting on to be there each week. You know, a growth path, even before they come, they, they're already committing. You know, growth path is this four-week sessions that is a commitment to go. If you go four weeks in a row, then you can join a serve team, right? It's a commitment that they make even before serving. And uh, joining a team, when they join a team, we say, hey, we'd love for you to join a team, what, what, which service works for you? Oh, team 2, 9 a.m., awesome. Well, they meet every other week at 9 a.m., right? That's a commitment. They're saying, yes, awesome. I committed to Growth Path four weeks. I'm committing to 
this team to 9 a.m., whatever team it is, to meet every other week. They're committing to it. And so you as captains have, because of that agreement, that a commitment that they've made, you have been given the authority to gracefully hold your teams accountable to the commitments they've made to show up and be there ready to serve. So that also gives you, though, an accountability to check in with your teams consistently, right? To, to, to be in fellowship with them, which we'll talk about next week as kind of pillar number two is fellowship. But the, the thing that I really like you to pray about this week and be thinking about for your teams uh, starting to implement is the gathering of the saints, right? Gather the, the, gather, uh, gather the committed saints who have said, yes, I want to serve in the house of the Lord. Yes, I want to prepare hearts for worship. Begin gathering them. Begin implementing the importance of this foundation to a thriving Christian community, which the promise at the end of this in Acts 2, it says, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Well, that, that's, that's a two-part for us. We want the, to add to our teams. We want to build the numbers of our teams, and that's built through uh, accountability from a leader, a spiritual leader who has that maturity to hold someone accountable gracefully. I'll say it again, gracefully hold them accountable. But also, um, it's, it's the second part is, like it says here, the, uh, added to the fellowship those who are being saved. As we gather committed saints under a spiritual, graceful accountability, we can build our teams to better prepare people's hearts for worship in the guest experience uh, ministry. And that preparing people's hearts for ministry, for worship, is how we get more people saved. When people come to church and feel welcomed and loved, that, that burden that they have on their heart falls off that weight on their shoulders falls off, that, um, that, that wall they've built up breaks down, their hardened heart softens to the Spirit, and that's when the Spirit can move through the ministry of Pastor Robert, through the message that he brings, through the worship, you know, through the altar call. All of it comes and begins with the gathering of the saints to prepare the hearts of those who are coming for worship. So I just encourage you guys uh, to pray about this pillar and to uh, begin thinking about how you can gather your teams. But I love you guys, and we'll continue this next week. Have a great one.